Connecting people, building communities, helping clients to build multi-generational wealth through real estate. Today, we have the privilege of having Norman Palker again with us. He's the founder of Horizon Tax Services, which was founded in 1991 and incorporated in 2009. So over the last 30 years of working with many clients that are over 1,500 uh, clients coast to coast, can you believe it, coast to coast that they are serving, they prepare personal business and rental tax re returns for individuals, self-employed professionals, and corporations. And so what I'm hearing so long as uh, we do have actually a track record of all of our appointments, uh, either on our computer calendar or uh, in a virtual book um, with all the dates that we know where we spend the money, who we met, and uh, where we went, we can be protected. But at the same time, the receipts are very important. Um, the CRA might be more flexible for the period of COVID when people were so um, so diligent of not really um, getting anything hand-to-hand, uh, -hand, but it's very important for CRA. So mm. how long do we need to keep those receipts? How long do we need to keep the uh, record of um, our expenditure? Well, CRA says six years. I recommend more. And technically, if you want to, dis if you want to destroy your receipts, you are to write CRA and say, is it okay for me to destroy oh. my receipts? Okay. And of course, CRA then might open up the file and say, hmm, I mean, I'm only making that up. But so most people, as long as, you know, they're, they're free and clear sort of thing is minimum of six years. If it's not taking any space or room, you know, take, keep a few more. But we've only had CRA go back three, I think the max is three or two to three years. However, every time Jerry goes back a year or two, that gives them, they're entitled to go back even further. Touch wood, they never have with my clients, but it, it is an option. So if you're a big, you. big business with lots of stuff going on, keep them. Okay, excellent. Norman, um, we covered a lot of great topics today. Is there anything else that you think that we need to know today? that you forgot to talk about. Yeah, and you read my mind. I, <laughs> the one thing, coming back to rentals, which I didn't mention, is if it's a husband and wife or, or partners, is especially if it's husband and wife renting a, a property, or even if it's in their own principal residence, is you can do a 50% split of the, uh -huh. uh, of the income or the loss. And so that that really helps because it splits it into the two different marginal tax brackets. So that that's uh, one thing. The other little bit which we didn't quite talk about was when you're self-employed and have a have a business that you run from your house, is you're also allowed to write off your expenses of operating your house against your business income. You're not allowed to double dip now. You can't take the hundred or all the expenses and apply them twice. So you have to be pretty careful how you divvy the expenses up between the rental property and your 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 business uh, expenses as your business income. So it's 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 a little tricky, and we're pretty careful because that's one area of CRA. If they come and do a review, man, that's the first thing they look at. So if you've divvied up your expenses properly. So there's two little things there and uh, to watch for. One key to having a home office is that it's used exclusively for business purposes. It's absolutely critical that that's what you... Mm, I'm trying to get the correct words here, but... <laughs> That's what CRA, CRA looks at. It's a space that you use exclusively for business. If you say you do something personal in your office space, it reduces the deduction dramatically. So that's about ben, it. Ben, thank you. Let me tell you one thing. I honestly feel uh, anybody 
any self-employed people that I know, including myself, since COVID, we have been using our home more as an office than ever. Um, we don't go to our office space as much. After COVID, actually, we bring more clients to our home. It was safer. We usually had a proper setup. And um, not only bringing clients to our home, but more importantly, working from home, it means that I'm using my kitchen because I can. I just need a space. Personally, one hour I am in my dining area, and one hour I'm in my kitchen area. Uh, I just want to make sure that if I'm working eight hours, a day in a uh, from home, then I would have some certain variety of the space that I can move around. So, what would you say about that? How would that count? Got to be really careful with with this. I agree, of course. People are using a lot more of their house for for business purposes. However, if it's a shared space, i.e., mm -hmm. you use the kitchen or the dining room for, if you use the dining room for meeting clients, say, and you also use it for family dinners. So it's a shared space. So CRA will ask, how many hours did you use the shared space for business? Mm -hmm. So if you met a client for two hours on one day, you get to claim two hours out of 24, so that's a 12th, uh, mm -hmm. for that one day of expenses. So if you multiply it by 365, it, it's very, very small. However, you know, if you want to spend the time to keep some detailed records, then yes, you can use shared space as an extra deduction. Excellent. So Norman, thank you for your time today. It's been always a pleasure to talk to you, ask your advice uh, when it becomes accounting or anything that uh, we encounter on daily business life. Um, we would love to have more opportunities to answer any questions our clients are actually asking us. And then we are here in the middle, um, bringing those questions to you that you can help us. Um, thank you so much for today. And um, is there anything else you want to add on to wrap up this, uh, this podcast? We love uh, answering questions and, and, and educating people as best as we can. And I do have a little tagline that I created a few years ago, and I have it as, we save the Canadian taxpayer from the jaws of the tax man. <laughs> Thank you for doing that, Norman. You are great. <laughs> Thanks, Mitra. See you next time. See you next time. Bye. Connecting people, building communities, helping clients to build multi-generational wealth through real estate.